In this presentation, we're going to see how to use service orders with Microsoft Dynamics NAV. First, we'll create service orders manually and automatically. Then we assign resources, we complete the service order, and we invoice the service order. So let's create a new service order in order processing. So we select our customer. All the information is filled on the invoicing tab. We can select the where the location of the customer if he has multiple locations. And we go on the service item and we can see his service items. So let's say it's a question about this server and we can see right away that it is under warranty 100% for labor and parts and we have 16 hours to respond we can indicate some fault and symptoms that could give us a clue about what could be the fault And here so we see it's under warranty. We could have just one line or we could have a call for multiple issues. So let's say we add a second line. It's for another item. It's still under warranty but the labor is not included. So we see it is under warranty because there is a contract in it. Let's see how to assign resources now. So it can simply be done by assigning a user ID. That could be the simple option. Another option would be to go on the res so on the line and see the availability per group or per resource. Let's have a look. So on this one we see Linda is uh, most appropriate and she's available. So we allocate that to Linda for tomorrow, three hours. And because we have something else to do, we're going, we're going to assign her on the same day and put one more hour to complete the job. Now if we go back and have a look at the availability of, availability of Linda, it's not eight hours anymore, it's four. Other way of doing the uh, availability, you could use a dispatch board that shows service order per service order and you go in the same way in the allocation and as we did before, we could use the resource availability or indicate directly who is going to do it, when, how long it's going to take. As uh, another way of doing it, pretty similar, would be to go to the service task. Here the difference is that it shows a detail, so we had two items to take care on that. So if we put a filter of the active, because we already assigned that, we see our two lines, the server and the monitor that we need to look after. Let's see how to complete the service. So let's say the technicians went and they did the job, they fixed the problem. Now we could enter the job directly in the uh, service order. So we can s indicate how long uh, the re resolution code, how long it took. So let's say two hours. Here we have an indication if it's uh, if we want to exclude for, um, from the warranty if we found anything in particular, and we can add cost and items that have been provided to uh, to fix the problem.
If you use timesheets, it's possible also to use them for service order. So here in the type, we'll put a service and we can indicate our service order. So it took Mary two hours to do that on Tuesday and then it goes to the no more timesheet approval process. Now let's go to the last part, invoicing the service order. So if we go back to our service order and we simply post, ship an invoice, the invoice is created for the two hours that uh, Mary or Linda spent but it was non-chargeable so there should be a 100% discount and so the customer pays nothing and to finish we can indicate the service order is finished either on the header or on the line and simply delete it